the mayor turns to the dispatcher at Lady and says, you better let the clergy know, too. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Get out of here. Like, they, they shine a big cross sign in the air like Batman and, like, all the clergy shots. <laughs> Because if anybody is an expert on the trapping and coercing of children, it would be the clergy. Like, they know their, like, they can just talk through their own personal experience. Oh no, they, they can escape in lots of different ways. Here's, here's a list of 15 ways kids have escaped and could, could, could escape. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because sometimes I'm so white I oppress myself. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, you know what's the biggest problem with atheism? What's that? It's outsized influence in Wyoming police departments. <laughs> it's, it's an important issue. Christian lives matter. We'll get there. It's, the not, it's just not fair. The movie is really? going to connect those fucking dots somehow. We're going to get it. They're going to use Donald Trump's Sharpie and connect those dots. I promise. And those are the only dots they will connect. Yeah. Now we've run out of pre-recorded stuff, so there's no Eli today. He's still training his understudy. But we're pleased to welcome back the host of Be Reasonable, co-host of Skeptics with a K, and the project director for the Good Thinking Society, Michael Marshall Marsh. Welcome back, sir. Hey, thanks so much for having me back, guys. Thank you for making me watch this, and thank you for making me watch this film first. So I was the first <laughs> one of the three of us to figure out what was going on with this film. <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> Jesus. I just did radio silence. I knew what was happening the whole time. It was delightful to watch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched The Cokeville Miracle. It's the story of an elementary school bombing. Yeah, it is. But... That that has the word miracle in it. Yeah. In the title. <laughs> it's trolling for Columbine, the Christian movie. <laughs> oh, God. The oh, Mormon God, movie, technically. Yeah, no, technically, because it is still Mormon movie month. And Marsh, how bad was this movie? And if you could, like a high pitched well at the beginning would be great. Well, if you want to hear how God works in mysterious ways, but first you need to sit through an hour of made-for-TV reconstruction of a real-life terrorist attack, you will love this movie. You will. It's like it's like if Schindler's List had ended with a rainbow appearing over Auschwitz. That's what this film is like. <laughs> yes! Yes! So, okay, to be clear, we got like two-thirds of the way through this movie messaging back and forth. Marsh is going like, guys, I, I don't know if this is going to work, and I don't know I don't know if I have time to watch a whole nother fucking movie. Do you guys have, like, a, a music video you want to review or something? <laughs> and, but then eventually you get to Act 3, and you're like, oh, this makes so yeah. much sense now. <laughs> if, if there hadn't been for that Act 3, we would have been doing god-awful gifts right now. That's yeah. the only thing I would have had time left to do. This, this feels insensitive. Can we watch, like, I don't know, an uh, Infowars episode about Newtown or something? Yeah. I feel like this one... <laughs> This isn't right Ooh. for us. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah. Um, best, best little kids harassing a terrorist. Oh, I love <laughs> so, that little girl so goddamn much. They <laughs> are fucking delightful. This movie had no idea, but it was hilarious at a <laughs> bunch of different points. We spend a good amount of time in a hostage situation, again, at an elementary school. And these little kids just roast the bad guy the whole time. <laughs> it's so good. They almost foil his whole plot with like, not touching, can't get mad. Like that really <laughs> happens. And he yes. doesn't know what to do. He gets frustrated. It's the greatest. Because they're laughed. not touching. Yeah, I know. No, they didn't. They did not touch. You can't get mad. It's true. That's the rule. It's in the thing. I laughed a bunch during this movie. Again, about a terrorist at an elementary school. Think about that. That's comic yeah. genius. No, it they is. They don't even realize what they did. <laughs> it is. So I'm going to, we've already alluded to this, of course, but I'm going to go with best worst gam selection. And I'm starting to think Eli does this on purpose, right? Because he writes the calendar and he knows when he's going to be away. He knows he was going to have a fucking kid for this one. And it seems like every time he knows he's going to be away, we end up with some terrible selection where we have to write fucking jokes about exploding kindergartners. Now, I want to tell you up front, this is a story where no children die. 
right? The only people who die in this story are the bad guy terrorists. But the fact that I have to tell you that up front really tells you what a gam appropriate movie we're talking about, right? <laughs> Jesus, when the fucking warning at the beginning is, okay, no kids are going to die. <laughs> That's usually not one of our movies. In fairness to Eli, though, I feel like the subject of exploding kindergartners was tra- like he doesn't want to miss this one in some sense. <laughs> <laughs> it was squarely in his wheelhouse, this one. That's yeah. right. Yeah, right, right. Thank right, you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so I want to say best worst protagonist and protagonist is with the upward inflection because I'm not convinced that the main guy in this is the protagonist right? of this film because our our main <laughs> character spends the vast majority of this film two hours away in a car and it's it's like if you were watching <laughs> Die Hard but if John McCain had spent the entire film commuting to the Nakatomi <laughs> Plaza right yeah you just cut, keep cutting to him and going well this traffic is shit and I can't get on the one on one yeah right no the fucking preview for this movie might as well go but there's only one ma- oh hold on he's on break never mind yeah like, at one point we cut to him and he's not even in his car he's like in uh 7-eleven when they're trying to yeah, contact him yeah, he's, like, that's right, right. he's just not even there now <laughs> <laughs> all right well i'll tell you what there's a lot of child hostages to try to make jokes about on the other side of this break <laughs> so we're gonna need to take a second but when we come back we're gonna dive into all the mysterious ways that are the Cokeville Miracle. So how are you and Lucinda handling the whole stay in place stuff? Oh, you know, we're managing a lot of board games. How are you guys doing? Yeah, same. Good days and bad, really. What, what about you, Heath? Time of my life. Really? Yeah, never been happier. Wow. So like, what's your secret? Oh, two words, Marsh. Sex, toys. It's like Adam and Eve says... The best part of staying at home is playing at home. Uh, it's an advertisement, right? And right now, you can take advantage of your downtime and choose almost any one item at 50% off. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with half a butt plug, but okay. Uh, we already kind of ran that play. We did that joke. No, just try to keep up. Oh, my bad. And when you do, you'll also get 10 free boredom-busting gifts, including six spicy movies and a three-piece bonus kit. Kit? Okay, I'm intrigued. I'm back in. Yeah, it's a kit. Thank you. On board. And best of all, the shipping is free and it's delivered discreetly to your door. Just remember to use the offer code AWFUL at checkout. Adam and Eve has thousands of products to make you glad you're staying at home. I'm convinced and was already going to do that anyway. Great. So just go to adamandeve.com and use the offer code AWFUL to get 50% off just about any item plus 10 free gifts. Use code AWFUL at checkout. Hey, everybody. I'm T.C. Christensen, the world-renowned Mormon filmmaker. I'm sure you already knew that. Welcome to our first Writer's Room meeting. Huzzah! I'm scrummy chuffed. Uh, okay. Uh, it's time to spread the LDS gospel. Let's all get excited. Bully! Squids and pebbles. R- right. Um, okay, okay, so um, we got a great idea for a movie called The Cokeville Miracle. Wait, I'm sorry. Are you talking about Cokeville, Wyoming? Cokeville, Wyoming. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where, where an elementary school got bombed. Exactly. Yep. And and you want to call the bombing of an elementary school a miracle? A miracle. Well, yeah, yeah. It's. A, I see what you're doing. But no, it's a story about God's plan. None of the kids died. Well, right, right. But they were all part of a, a hostage situation with a bomb. I mean, a, a bunch of those kids have got severe PTSD. That's not a real thing. Oh, That's super, up. super duper real. You're an idiot. Mm, agreed to disagree. But uh, you get it, right? Like, you get what I'm doing? You know, like, the Lord works in mysterious ways. That's what, That's what we always say. Well, yeah, but not in a positive way. I mean, that's just a thing that we say when we're losing arguments to atheists. Oh, it is? I thought it was like, mysterious, mysterious, no, it's, cool. No. Okay. Oh, well, whatever. Um, just just for the record, the shack was about a dead kid, and it made ninety seven million dollars at the box office. Glory be! Tickety boo! What? That can't be real. Okay. Yeah. There's. You, you keep saying stuff like that. There's no way that last one was a real British saying. Uh, t- Tickety boo is is absolutely a real British saying. It's no fucking way. And we're back for the breakdown. And we're going to open up on some small town Wyomingness. 
right? Yeah. We get a cold open on this like sad yoga group yeah. in Wyoming somewhere. Right. And then what is that? I don't know. It, I, well, here's my only theory. Seconds later, it was like, nope, the yoga was just a warm up for the movie. Now it's time <laughs> for a warm open on police sirens at a terrible, terrible death of a child or something like that. It's like they wanted to like a do over, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we get this bucolic opening. It says based on a true story. And I, it almost should have like parentheses below that that says, or God would have done a better job on the miracle. <laughs> I mean, it should have said, uh, based on a true story brackets. Well, the first hour anyway. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> everything after act three not so much yeah but then yeah but then the movie calls him mulligan and it's like no no you know what we want to go dark for the opening so we start at this hotel murder scene or something that we will never learn anything about no nope, no just we just are uh, uh, quote-unquote protagonist just in a room that was so bare i mistook it for Heath's apartment but then i saw there was a table <laughs> lamp there so it couldn't have been it was way oh too right bare. yeah no exactly it had been decorated the murder there is different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Redneck Deputy A wants to walks up to Redneck Deputy B, who will be our absentee protagonist. <laughs> and he goes like, hey, man, you OK? And he's like, yeah, we're never really going to fill in the details of this. But it sure will have me questioning the existence of God later in the film. <laughs> yeah. I'm really having a problem of evil, Frank. I don't know. Just like, is that a thing? I feel like that's a thing. So, <laughs> Frank's like, nah, just maybe later in the movie. Just uh, pump the brakes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we flash over to our villain. He is trying out his new bomb design in Arizona. Now, I'm telling you that if you were watching the movie, what you'd know is you're looking at a black fucking screen. Yeah. <laughs> My first note in the scene is, I can't see the movie. And then I was like, what's happening? Is the movie shy? <laughs> like, we've had, that's, we've had like four box at this point yes, on right. the movie starting. <laughs> <laughs> Just start your fucking movie. It's like, it's like a, the movie's a little kid afraid to go off the diving board. You want to start your movie? <laughs> no. You have to coax it out. <laughs> okay. Let the other movies go past you. <laughs> Yeah, right. So and so we get the, a woman walks up to this dude who's who's about to blow up this bomb, and she says, "What is it going to work?" And he goes, "All you need to know is that the air will burn." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's what fire is, right? Like a <laughs> burning air is fire." But he blows up a school bus. Now they can't afford to do that, so they poorly CGI it instead. Oh, no, the CGI is amazing. Oh, and every time we see fire throughout this entire film, it's that bad CGI to a point where I thought if at any point one of the uh, one of the bad guys smokes, they'd probably CGI in the lighter <laughs> lighting his cigarette. <laughs> the only, well, look, we, we paid for the after effect. We might as well get our full use out of this yeah. fire after effect. <laughs> right. So, yeah, exactly. So to an uneducated person who didn't realize this was CGI, you might assume that he had shot this fucking bus with a missile of some sort <laughs> but no it was a homemade bomb it was Jesus. a homemade bomb that was on a string it was attached his remote bomb was attached by a, a long wire and he says trial number four absolute perfection and i think if you've got to bomb something while still being attached to it with a wire that is not perfection by my definition of what would <laughs> right? a perfect bomb like if no. you've got to be that close to it you've not really you basically faxed this school bus to make it blow up by <laughs> <laughs> do you buy that from acme you know this is gonna not go well like you have to know also yeah and speaking of the the note about how this was working to perfection he's saying this i should point out into this gigantic comically enormous <laughs> even for the time this was supposed to have happened tape recorder right yeah he he's got that straight from his zx spectrum that's what he's using <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> unreal all right so now we cut back to wyoming where a family is familying this is protagonist family and he sure is a good dad and not when he's supposed to be you know responding to police calls at the elementary school but when he's you know when it's story time he's good <laughs> <laughs> but so but this is where we have to introduce the doubts about God, right? This is it's time for family prayer, but dad can't say the prayer because he's not really sure 
about this whole Jesus thing. Yeah, and, and atheists just can't say the words of prayers because it makes like our tongue bleeds or something. A small <laughs> starts coming off yes. the top of the tongue. We've got to avoid that at all costs. <laughs> also, his daughter, his daughter Cindy, opens the, the prayer by saying, Dear God, thank you for everything in the world. It's like, Cindy, we've just seen a guy fax explode a bus. You might want to leave him out of the thank you and be a bit more specific about what you're thanking God for. It's like everything in the world. <laughs> so... So, okay, now we get one of these weird moments where I, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I looked up this true story and and got some details on it before we went into the movie. So I knew things like the fact that like this shopping cart that he's about to buy would be the basis of his bomb. Yeah, I had not looked that up and I was baffled by this bit. I didn't look this up until midway through the film. Once the details started getting worse and worse, I was like, I wonder which details I'm actually allowed to point out are ridiculous. Oh no, those ones were real. Okay, okay. I'm I'm not going to say that about him. But yeah, so this whole shopping cart thing just completely threw me. Well, the movie was confused by this too. Like his accomplice didn't look it up either and was like, are we using a shopping cart for our (laughs) Well, and when we say shopping cart, look, it's one of those little like you know, it's like the old lady dragging two bags of shit back to her apartment in yes. the Bronx carts, right? Like, it's not a full shopping cart. And they're trying to make it look ominous because it will be the basis of the bomb, but it's just one of those little shitty wire shopping carts bouncing around in a parking lot. That's, <laughs> that's what we're really looking at. He has to stop and, like, adjust the wheel. It's squeaky. It's a little bit off, too. It's always <laughs> on a different height. One is a yeah. different height. And his accomplice, I don't, uh, it doesn't surprise me that she didn't question why he needed the shopping cart or look up any of the details because she makes some very strange choices all the way through. For example, in this scene, she's wearing a full canoe dangling from each ear, which was a very bold fashion choice. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, her motivations get weirder as we go. He also tells her off for asking questions. Mm -hmm. He's like, what have I told you about asking questions? And I genuinely couldn't tell if that's because he's the bad guy or because he's a Mormon. And it's just, we we don't allow your your type to ask questions. The men do the questions around here. (laughs) Yeah, it's both. And and I did think as well, this being a Mormon kind of film, I thought, fair play to them, because normally the Mormons like to hide their historic links to terrorism, but they're just putting these terrorist links right out there in this. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so now we cut to uh, school in Wyoming, the, the school day starting. And I got to say, you know, like th- we, when you were a kid, you'd have friends come over or whatever, and your family would like get into an argument or there would be something embarrassing, like some family ritual or something. <laughs> That's how I felt knowing that Marsh was watching this scene that opens with kids saying the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> oh, yeah. So like... <laughs> For me, the only thing creepier than having to have your country's flag in every single classroom, which sounds like something that if you described North Korea doing that, most Americans would think, that's pretty weird. No, you've got it in all of your classrooms. The only thing weirder than that is having all the kids chant in unison a pledge of allegiance to that flag while one of them holds that flag. It is psychotic to watch this. Wait, Marsh, you don't have that in the UK? No. Like, how do you know what country you're highlighting? I don't understand (laughs) Well, that's because in all British classrooms, uh, we've got a map of the world, which not only has us on it, but has all of the bits that we used to own by stealing it from people around the world. And that's a that's a pretty colourful map by this point. So we're, yeah. we're very much <laughs> acquainted with, uh, with the world because we had to know where our territory used to end. So, yeah, we all know these things. We don't learn a lot about them, but we do know them. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, and we're also going to meet this little kid, Jason. His job will be to... Be, you know, uh, really dumb mm. and then eventually stare down the, the terrorist, right? And, and this kid, Jason, he looks like if Michael J. Fox cloned himself, but only after the shaking started, so he didn't oh, get God. quite right. <laughs> 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 so we're in the middle of this, uh, this class and the, the, um, there's a, there's a fire alarm. Right. And they start walking the kids out and the principal is messing with the fire alarm. He's like, well, this darn fire alarm never works properly. And I'm like, holy shit, what a serious problem. (laughs) Yeah, but they have no idea. They have no idea. The principal's talking to like the janitor guy or something. He's like, is this like a real fire alarm or do we have? And he's like, no, 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 it just does that sometimes. Whatevs. Yeah, Eh, it's fine. It's like the light on my dashboard. No, 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 no. the tires are fine. Yeah. Uh, the, with the fire <laughs> alarm with the children. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> you think we'll look back at this moment and laugh? Nah, nah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> and, and then we, we have to go back to our bad guy 
And we have to double down on the ominous bomb parts that we don't know are bomb parts yet. <laughs> this is the scene where he ominously dumps out milk. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then he starts giving his partner shit because he's out of milk. And like, she could just look three inches to her left and see a sink full of milk and be like, I think, I think I know where the milk went, mate. This is not my <laughs> fault. It's pretty clear what's going on. But now, because she's so stupid and so bad in this film, she doesn't even question that. Yeah. And just drink your coffee black like a grown up. Like, whatever. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> he's angry about this milk slight from his wife accomplice. Well, yeah. And again, the reason is because he needed a gallon, not a half gallon, to keep the gasoline for his bomb in and she got the wrong size but they don't tell you that so you're just like oh well have a snack other than captain crunch you asshole i did not get that at all because later he he does get another milk carton but he gets it from the dump and so right. i just thought this was just him being shitty to her to establish him being shitty i didn't even put those pieces together fuck me this no. film's really bad at doing its job no, this is Really important. You can't get milk jugs except at the dump or in your fridge. <laughs> so it's fucking up his plan. Um, can we talk about one other thing in this scene? One other detail? Oh, yes, yes. Please, <laughs> please do. do. Please, please do. do. Okay. So this guy. I knew this was going to establish... piss you off so bad. I, I was fucking furious. So they're... <laughs> They're about to establish that he's like a math genius, mm. bomb expert guy. Mm -hmm. He's also former law enforcement. We find out in a second. So he's working on his bomb stuff or something. And there's a piece of paper, like a notepad with math on it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, I'm fucking pausing that. That's going to be <laughs> priceless. <laughs> he's got, he's, <laughs> he's, he's got the integral. From zero to infinity of e to the negative x squared. That's it, though. Yeah. That's like the entire... And he has a calculator next to that. Not a graphing <laughs> calculator. It's like an old-timey calculator. So I'm thinking to myself, like, why would he need to know that fucking... Lim like, that integral? What... How is the area under that curve useful? That's crazy. <laughs> the calculator doesn't make sense. And then at the very bottom of the page... There's just some stuff you can't really see. There's like two other steps, and then at the bottom, just pie circle. Yes, big he circle. did circle. Yes. It. He did circle it to be fair. Well, so, to him. so that we'd know. The I answer. could not stop thinking about this. <laughs> it's really important to circle pie when you're going to try and make fax bombs. It's really important that it's not just pie. You've got to circle it as well. Well, you yeah. and it has to be an exact circle, right? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. And the integral is radical pi over two. Which he might, I don't know how he got from that to just pi by, he was just like, pi, that's a cool Matthew number. That's the answer. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. But I couldn't stop thinking about this. Like, did I learn to build a bomb in high school? Like, like, why are they teaching us that? Oh, and then this is also the moment where he like calls his accomplices. Apparently his unwitting accomplices, as we'll learn. <laughs> in in gruesome we don't want to get sued levels of detail <laughs> yeah and it, it's it's fair to say that his accomplices who survive this film are shown throughout this film to be entirely innocent and i'm sure those two facts are completely related or the ones who are still alive yeah no they they had nothing to do with it yeah right <laughs> they, they're right. very clear on that fact well, and it's in it to, to a comical degree. We'll get to it later, but to a comical degree, they have to establish that no, none of these people knew anything at all was bad was happening because clearly those people wouldn't cooperate with the making of the film unless <laughs> they, you know, anyway, yeah, it's, it's really funny. Yeah. We'll get there, but they clearly do because he calls up one of the other guys and he's like, screaming eagle, this is Black Sparrow. <laughs> We're doing. <laughs> We're doing the bomb now of the elementary school. And the guy's like, dude, you're, you're doing the code wrong. You did the code at the beginning, and then you just said bomb. Talk in the code, man. Yeah. All right. So now we cut to protagonist dropping his kids off at church, but he can't go in because he's having this existential atheism crisis and would burn if he walked beyond those doors, right? <laughs> yeah, and I love how he says to her that, you know, his whole reason for not going in is problem of evil and she responds to that by silently walking away she did nothing <laughs> absolutely not even a jingle of keys just like mm -hmm, nope walk away she's like well <laughs> motherfucker you have the keys because you're driving god damn it that's not fair <laughs> so okay and then we have to meet teen daughter now i love teen daughter she's the best character in this movie best actor in this movie because what what she'll do is she's the terrorist's daughter Right. Yeah. And she is just going to sit in the back seat shitting on his terrorism plan for the first third <laughs> of this the movie. 
<laughs> yeah, she's she's pretty great. I also had down that she looks like Mormon Miley Cyrus. She's uh, she's Hannah Utah. <laughs> And also, by the way, if I'm not mistaken, this actress was 23 years old when they filmed this. Huh. I'm pretty sure she was. Yeah. All right. So now they drive up to Wyoming, right? The terrorists do. They're in this little motel and it's time for the accomplices who have absolutely no guilt whatsoever <laughs> to show up. <laughs> and they show up going like, oh, we can't wait to see what surprise thing that we don't know about. We invested money in, David. Can you tell us? <laughs> right. About the thing? But first, he's like, shut up, shut up. I'm just finishing something. Okay, got it. I've proven mathematically that I am immortal and I can go in and out of death and life. And they're like, what, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so much about this that I love. I love the fact that when they burst in, in on him doing this, he's playing the calculator like a concert pianist. It's just like, ta 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 Just yeah, tapping Right, yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> and he's managed to type so many numbers into this cheap 1980s calculator that he's become immortal. And I was wondering, did he put in like the Konami code into the, cal the calculator? Is that <laughs> what he's done there? <laughs> Fuck, there's not a B. I'm using A as a B. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> and he explains this to his accomplices. Like, you know, I, I figured out, I've proven mathematically how I can become immortal. And they're like, yeah, that's great. But like, what's your big idea? It's like, sorry, was resurrection not a big enough idea for Yeah, you? right. <laughs> I feel like we can stop bar? there. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I love the look on the guy's face where he's like, yeah, no, I just figured out with this calculator how I can die and come back to life. And they're like, well, wish you had told us that before we invested <laughs> in your thing. <laughs> Does your plan involve having to know how to do that? All of us or <laughs> no, but his What's plan going on. And, and, and here's this is also a red flag for the investors in the audience who might find themselves roped into a scheme that they don't know the details of. When you ask the person that you invested your money with to show them what you invested in and they start setting shit on fire to show you how flamey it gets. It's time to get the fuck out, you know? So he's like, I'm not going to tell you the entire business plan, but here's a bunch of flour I'm going to light on fire. But yeah, he says, really? what's the big idea? He throws flour up in the, into in the air, lights it and says that times a million. St still not an idea, mate. That is not an idea. That's just a lot <laughs> more burning flour. <laughs> this, but more so, is not a business plan. <laughs> so, no, but that, let, let me get my calculator. Times one million. <laughs> oh, there's not enough spaces. Okay, times a thousand times. A thousand. So, okay, and then we get the first of many of those just shoehorned in bullshit. We sure are innocent lines where the one guy goes, are we going to go into the fireworks business? And David, the, the, the <laughs> bad guy doesn't say yes or anything. <laughs> no. Right? And they're just like, fireworks business. Woohoo. No, but the accomplice wife is like, the air will burn. <laughs> and he's like, okay, just first of all, that's that's my thing. I thought we stopped, like I was saying. Was, <laughs> my thing is the air will burn. Also, uh, everybody, don't listen to her. She's, she's, she made it weird with the tone. It's not. It is the fire. We're doing fireworks. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. And they're like, okay. <laughs> fireworks and math immortality yeah yeah yeah. here's a check yeah here's a check. <laughs> yep oh and the the next scene we do the exact same shit again right so this is where the scene where they're painting the windows of the van right yeah and he's he's full-on <laughs> missing yagging his daughter when yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> all the way up daniel son <laughs> <laughs> yeah and she's like very reasonably hey dad why are we painting up the windows of our minivan <laughs> And he's like, not terrorism. And she's like, okay. Okay. Now, now it feels like it's clearly terrorism. I don't know. You just will the air, but the air will burn. See? Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You do that a lot. Yeah. You do that a lot. And of course, the dumbass, completely innocent accomplices are standing there off to the side talking to each other, going, I bet we have to paint the uh, windows to keep the fireworks cooled down, huh? <laughs> We sure are innocent here. Uh, yeah. I love this how cheery they are. It's amazing. So <laughs> cheery, their fireworks. I feel genuinely bad that they didn't go into the fireworks business. It's clearly this guy's dream. He's clearly well off for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they load everything up with, uh, you know, the, the unknown plan that involves guns, flammable powders, and blacked out windows. <laughs> Who knows what it could be? And a squeaky shopping cart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no fireworks, though. They're like, hey, buddy, where's the fireworks? 
Okay, no, no, don't worry about it. I'm sorry, I, I was asking too many questions. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> going hunting? Are we going hunting for fireworks? So yeah, okay. Now we have to establish that doubting cop is going to be gone for the entire movie, right? Which is very important. Obviously, incredibly important to what turns out to be the action and his uh, role in that action. Yeah. <laughs> and I, so much of this is fucking hilarious because this is uh, like uh, again based on a true story where obviously everyone who's on the town payroll just does whatever the fuck they want. And they have to explain that away in the movie, right? So, like, the cop was days away when this had the only cop in the town was days away. The principal was nowhere near the fucking school. And so they keep having to be like, yes, I'm just going to go and do something normal that has nothing to do with a prostitute. I will be back <laughs> constantly. So now we're seeing the, the cop do that, right? He's going to go help his brother with something. Yeah, and and then we and we see the breakfast scene after they after he's left oh, as well. Yes. And there's a couple <laughs> yeah. of things about this breakfast scene that do annoy me a little bit. And it's why is it that in films kids always leave midway through breakfast? This is right? bad parenting. Like get them up ten minutes earlier so they actually finish <laughs> their breakfast <laughs> every single time. And what we hear is some car <laughs> horns beep in the distance, and like, gotta go to school now, mum. It's like well. Who's taking you to school? We know your dad's out of town. Your mum's here. The school bus hasn't parked outside your house and honked its horn. That seems a very <laughs> inefficient way. Who's taking your children to school? But she's not bothered by that. And she's like, bye, love you. Be safe at school. Don't get held hostage by a crazy terrorist. Bye. Yeah. As they run out of the door. <laughs> exactly. God exactly. is love. <laughs> All right, so the terrorist guy and, and his crew, they're, they're on their way to the school. He stops to dictate into that comically large cassette recorder. <laughs> I looked it up, by the way. The mini cassette recorder invented in 1967, commercially available and, <laughs> and relatively cheap for consumers at this okay. point in history. Regardless of the size of this thing, which is ridiculous, and we should dwell on it many times. It's absurd. It's, it's the size <laughs> of the car. But when will these tapes be useful? Does, like... <laughs> Sometime in the future, he thinks he's going to be like, hey, you guys remember when we did test number 17 of the bomb powder to kill the other <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Glad I made these tapes. Yeah. Bond memories. <laughs> and I, I love as well how like he just like stops in the middle of the road, pulls over, does a tape explaining how he's going to blow everything up. And everyone else in the car is like, wait, wait, let's hear him out. Let's, hear, let's see what this is Yes, called. right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. They get an absurd way into this plot before they're like, Hold on a second, man. When you say bomb an elementary school full of children, do you mean in a violent way or what? They even ask if he's joking. And it's like, I'm yeah. going to kill the children of this very specific school. Is that lol? Classic. Come on, Are what's you? the real plan? It's like, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You're going to... Can you tie this in with the fireworks store? Because I know we're still really doing that. That's definite. <laughs> so... All right. So now... Batty is scoping out the, the school from a distance, right? The bad guy. And the char and basically, this is a scene so the character in the movie can go like, boy, this movie sure is about to get going. <laughs> so the van pulls up to the school. Teen girl isn't so sure about this. And we see that the two accomplices are handcuffed in the back of the van, which, to their credit, they were in real life. So they probably weren't genuinely accomplices to this thing. <laughs> And, and oh, I love this too. As they're leaving the van, the one handcuffed guy turns to the main bad guy and he goes, David, is this got anything to do with that backstory we forgot to mention earlier about how you were the town marshal here in this little <laughs> small town? Just <laughs> And don't don't say the air will burn. The air will. OK, okay. <laughs> David, could this uh, terrorist atrocity you're about to commit have anything to do with that massive grudge you're, you're currently harboring? Just uh, apropos of nothing and ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, so, okay, so him and his wife and the teen daughter are carrying in guns and bombs. And, of course, the teen girl is carrying eight rifles. There has to be a better <laughs> way style, right? Oh, it's the <laughs> greatest. It, this was one of the funniest moments in the movie. It was. Because she's, she's carrying them all so awkwardly, ex exactly like an infomercial. And he's like, he turns back and looks at her as she drops them on the ground. And they they clunk all over the place and, like, somehow roll away like marbles in all directions. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, don't drop the automatic weapon. She's like, sorry, sorry. Does your daughter drop all your guns when you attack an elementary school? <laughs> there must be a better way. 
The squeaky shopping cart full of guns. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then it shows you how he puts his uh, bomb together, but it goes into such detail on how he made the bomb. It's practically a YouTube tutorial. It really... I could probably make that bomb yes. from just having watched this film at this point. Way well, too much detail. Do you know the integral from zero to infinity <laughs> of E to the I, negative I think it's pi, but with like a, a circle around it. I think that yeah, would be the exactly. job. It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> yep. kind of close. And this was the first point at which I figured, I realised that the shopping cart was actually a vital ingredient. And I thought, yeah, that makes sense, because otherwise he'd have had to like carry the bomb or kind of like scooch it along the ground like he's moving a bookcase, and that would have been, that would have been tricky. So fair play, yes, he's got it right there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he thought to do that with a bomb, but not for the guns, right? Like, come on, <laughs> fucking idiot. Like a bag. <laughs> Man, yeah. Bags exist. <laughs> so, all right, so he goes to the principal's office to get like a taking the school hostage hall pass. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, we've got the receptionist, Tina Cook, and she is literally, she may as well be humming Lou, 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 doing secondary <laughs> stuff. <laughs> secondary stuff is my favorite stuff. <laughs> it's the best. He walks in and she's like, can I help you? And he's like, hi. Yeah, we have a 1030 with this is a bomb and I will murder you all. And she's like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. And, and the teenage girl realizes what's going on. And she's like, you know what? I'm not doing this. And the dad is like, well, you. And then he realizes that she's the one carrying all the guns. And he's like, can can leave if you would like to leave. Uh, please <laughs> set those guns down and you can take the van. And I love this because she says, are you crazy? And it's like, yeah, this is the right time to ask this question. Not <laughs> earlier when he said he was able to mathematically prove he could defeat death and not when he was recording a literal manifesto in the <laughs> middle of the car. No, that wasn't the time to think, oh, yeah. this guy may be on the edge a little bit. No, now is your line. <laughs> yeah. She's now piecing this together. She was moments ago carrying a ar an armful of automatic weapons into an elementary school being like, yeah, this is still probably fireworks. <laughs> 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 oh, and there's there's one single line there's one single line that the terrorist says to the receptionist that i i just loved because he says so yeah try and hit me over the head or anything like that and i'll pull this trigger and i thought that is weirdly specific the specific the specifying try and hit me over the head and i want him to carry on listing other ways that the secretary might be able to attack him <laughs> and what are you doing like if you like wait until i'm looking away and then you put your fist out and then you say hey david have you got a minute and then i turn my head and look at you and my cheek hits your fist like really hard i'll pull the trigger in that case too <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so but we should establish this. So, so he's got a dead man trigger on his bomb. So what he's done, and because we want to like lean into the YouTube tutorial here, is he's got a clothespin that's being held together that would close the circuit, and he's tied a little shim to his wrist. So if his wrist moves away from the clothespin, it'll close the bomb will go off, right? So if anybody shoots him or grabs him and tries to pull him away from the bomb, the bomb explodes. That's obviously integral to the movie. Mm -mm. Integrals are also integral. To <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. Yeah. As it turns out. So teen girl hauls ass to the first official looking building and runs in screaming help. And of course, it's a little town. So it's like the fucking police department slash courthouse slash DMV building. And I'm going to go ahead and say it. This is the closest any actor in this movie ever comes to pulling it off. Right. Yeah. Although the script that they give her doesn't really do her any favors. Because she goes in and she's yelling, you need to listen to me. Something very bad will happen if you don't listen to me. We need the police. You need to listen to me. I need to talk to the police. Why won't you get me a police officer? Oh, why? It's like, just say, bomb school. Done. Like, really, really easy. <laughs> bomb at school. You can even use the at symbol. That's... <laughs> so, yeah, you could speed it up. But yeah, yeah. So and, and and they're like, are you sure there's a bomb in the school? And she's like, no, no, no. Look, I brought handcuffed guys as evidence. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes the way she was driving earlier all the funnier to think that those guys were rolling around in the back going like, I get the urgency, but um, yeah, all right. So we start off with the uh, the effort, I guess they got to gather all of the kids into one classroom here. <laughs> so we start off in this class with this teacher reading Goldilocks and the three bears to this kid. The terrorist shows up and he's like, uh, excuse me, I have a bomb and need to use. <laughs> and, and she scolds him. Yeah. Like a teacher. It's the best. She's like, this is my classroom. You are getting a timeout. And like, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a grown up. Also, uh, again, terrorist with a bomb. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> do what I say. She's like, oh, okay. You know, you know what? Solid point withdrawn. And then we see how terrible the, the security and, 
this school. And I would think in schools oh. in general really is because this is the part where like lady terrorist just goes to all of the classrooms and says, hey, guys, everybody gather up in one classroom. All right. I'm a grown up. So you have to do what I say. And even the teachers are like, well, she is a grown up. It's, it's infuriating. She she burst into one classroom and and the class is being taught by uh, basically an aged Courtney Cox and she <laughs> says follow me I've got a surprise for you and the teacher to this stranger in the school says oh what kind of surprise and brings yeah. her entire <laughs> class to find out and every teacher falls for it it's incredible yes. <laughs> she might as well put like a line of cookies out the door and then like the teacher <laughs> follows first like ooh a cookie ooh a cookie. Is this a surprise or is there an extra surprise beyond all the cookies? I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm going to find out. Yeah. So, yeah. So they gather all the elementary school children around the improvised explosive device. And I'll tell you, the jokes just write themselves from there on out. <laughs> <sighs> so uh, we should also mention there's one mom that showed up late to the school and left her baby in the car seat as she's running her other kid into the school. Yeah, yeah, and she and that's because she's in a rush because her son's late for the hostage situation. And she's like, oh, shit, come right, on, I yeah. can't believe we're late for the whole hostage thing. <laughs> yeah, so she leaves her kid out in the car seat, which is fucked up. I mean, come on, lady, mm. you should know better than that shit. Yeah. Yeah, but, so, I mean, we will come to this later, but that is the least fucked up place her kid is going to be in this film. Because that's, later, well, that's true, yeah, the safest. She rescues that kid <laughs> into a bomb. Quote, rescues, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's confusing. Also... Small detail, but all these kids and adults walk into this classroom with a terrorist who has clearly a bomb and a stack of assault rifles. <laughs> and every, it's, I guess, people in Wyoming, they're like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Looks like every dad's shed. That's cool. Right, right. Oh, it must be show and tell today. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right down to when the, the woman who was uh, rushing in late, she runs into Ben, the, the teacher we'll see sort of throughout this film. He looks like a kind of stone surfer who seems like he just hangs around the school. It's not clear that he's a teacher. And she <laughs> says, do you know where Carsten's class is? And he sort of says, he might as well be saying, um, I don't know, maybe they're in the room at the end with the guns and the massive bomb. I mean, give, give that a try. Maybe go along there with that massive kind of dangerous situation. Give that a go. Yeah. <laughs> just no curiosity. I think it's like a fireworks expo or something. I don't know. Check it out. It's like a surprise. I, I heard someone saying about air burning. So, yeah, it's, it's really a science experiment, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And so now, okay, now crazy guy with a bomb is starting to comprehend the reality of being in a room full of seven-year-olds for a long period of time. Right? So we get this <laughs> long pretty scene fucking great. where he's just like... Yeah trying to take in all of this noise and bullshit and anger and we're like and and honestly the scene should be called yeah we do underpay them don't we <laughs> mm. all right but this is also where david lays out the plot you know the principal shows up and he's like you know i want two million dollars for each of these kids or i'm gonna blow everybody up and, and like two million dollars for each child is way overpriced andy wilson can get you them way cheaper than that. <laughs> like, let me let me know how many you need <laughs> And like w when he sends the prince, he, he tries to send the principal away to like do calls around and to, to try and gather his money. And he says, I'm prepared to stay here for 10 days if necessary. So Congress have got the time to raise the money. And like, yeah, hilarious. As if Congress could successfully pass a bill to spend $20 million in 10 days. Ridiculous. <laughs> Straight out of the movie. It was like, uh, it lost me at this point, the movie. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so also 10 days just feels like a, like a weird low ball there. <laughs> like you're you're doing a bomb thing and he's like I'm prepared to stay here for 10 entire days like cut to day 11 and he's like all right this is too much we're not doing it <laughs> tap out <laughs> this is ridiculous and I love that there's this moment where like the kids are driving him nuts so he starts yelling at him and I'm like oh that'll work man yeah that's going to work wonders for you <laughs> All right, so the, he sends the principal off. He says, like, you go call the cops. You have 15 minutes to tell them what's going on before I start shooting the kids, right? Yeah, and then he says something like, it'll be a brave new world. And then Ben, the stoner teacher, is turning to this hilariously attractive teacher. We don't find out. I think later we found out his name, but he's just hilariously attractive, this teacher, who's spent the entire time sort of stood there with his arms folded, sort of shaking his head like, oh, well, this is annoying. Jesus Christ, what, <laughs> yeah, a, that's right, what yeah. a Monday. But Ben sort of leans over and says, Psst, Brave New World is basically the idea of reincarnation. And I thought, 
Is that you're whispering that there? How does Ben know about this whole Brave New World being the theory reincarnation thing? Is is Ben part of the same sort of cell and same group as uh, as, as Dave the terrorist? It's I, I think <laughs> it's weird that they bring this up at this point. I think he saw his math right. He's like, wait, that's pi circled. Hold on, I know this equation. <laughs> Hold on, right? And he's telling that other teacher like, oh, let the authorities know this isn't just a terrorist with a bomb. He also made a an Aldous Huxley illusion. <laughs> so this is kind of serious. So yeah. So the principal runs to call the cops and he's like, "Yeah, uh we you know there's a terrorist at the school with the bomb." And they're like, "Yeah, we know. Old fucking news, man. We haven't <laughs> done anything about it, but uh we know." Oh, you knew. Okay. Huh. <laughs> there's a weird intonation as well because the principal presumably he's meant to have said Nadine who's the, the, the receptionist at the police station Nadine how do you know but what he says Nadine how do you know <laughs> like, yeah. he's like yeah, Nadine you're <laughs> shit at your job what yeah, the fuck would exactly. you know Nadine <laughs> <laughs> alright so we cut back to the classroom where it's time for us to meet little baby Noah girl <laughs> oh, is this girl she's amazing? the greatest Oh, I love her so goddamn much. So the terrorist lady needs a count of all the kids. So she tells all the teachers, hey, everybody gather up and and, and count all the kids that you've got from your class and tell me how many you have. But she says it incorrectly. And this little girl just chimes in and points that out to her. She's like, (laughs) yeah, you really are um, not very good at speaking English. For that to be your we first have language. Fewer than a hundred kids. In here. <laughs> okay. I'm a terrorist. Fuck you. Well, I mean, we do know exactly how many kids there are. It's, we don't need to be saying less of you. We know exactly how, because as all of the teachers count up the number of kids they have, it's like it's it's eighteen, it's ten, it's fifteen, it's fourteen, it's fifteen, it's twelve, it's fourteen. And then quick as a flash, the terrorist is able to add those numbers together. And the teacher generally turns to the teacher who's got a pen and paper adding up these seven numbers and says, <laughs> He's right. Oh my god. Like they're impressed at his powers of low level addition. Is he a robot? What's he? Yeah, it's seven two digit numbers, the first digits of which were all one. <laughs> Is so he you had calculus? to you had to add seven one digit numbers together and then put 70 on it. That was all that happened. And meanwhile, everybody else is standing around going like, how could he have possibly counted that many toothpicks that quick? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And there's a really small note. And again, it's just because Ben, the teacher is such a bad actor. But when they say how many kids they've got from their class there, he sounds genuinely disappointed that he doesn't have the most kids. He's like, I've I've got 12. (laughs) It's like he's lost a game in his head. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> meanwhile by the way we cut to little um car seat girl sitting in the back like the fucking forgotten fair and airplane i was hoping that was just gonna be a running gag yeah she like she slams a hand on the window like uh, kate winslet in titanic and her mum's like psyched <laughs> oh, different reasons though very different reasons. yeah very different okay. reasons so <laughs> thank you for that follow-up <laughs> All right, so now the dispatcher's trying to get in touch with Ron the cop, but he's too busy doubting the existence of God, right? <laughs> we get, like, five different scenes of her trying to call him and him just not even being in his car. You know, it's it's like, the best. He's just getting She's like, hey, Ron, this is pretty important. Uh, really hope you're not about to take a long shit at a gas station. I'm watching him walk into a gas station. He could clearly take a long shit. Yeah, a newspaper under his arm. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> And then there's this other awesome, because there's like several of these awesome kids that fuck with the terrorists. This is another one who's just like not impressed with his gun selection. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> this kid comes up to him and says, I mean, you got some pretty cool guns, but why not a AK-47? That's a, that's a better gun than what you have. <laughs> and the terrorist's like, that's illegal, asshole. Fuck you, communist. Buy American. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to admit, pretty good line. Pretty good line there. So, yeah, and this is where the mom that showed up late suddenly remembers that she has the endangered child in the car, right? In safened, in safened child. Yeah, well, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. (laughs) And honestly, like, they really lean into the ironic humor now. And I'm impressed Mm. by that, right? Like, this This was funny. Yeah. This was genuinely funny. With with the uh, terrorist lady going like, you endangered your child by leaving him out in a car? Come on, come on, bomb lady. Come on. Yeah, that was good. Hey. You're a terrorist, right? Can you just <laughs> relax? And she's like, well, still, I mean, a baby? In a co- Did you crack the window? <laughs> no, 
You didn't crack the window. Exactly. <laughs> You're a bad person. All right. So meanwhile, Nadine, the, the, the dispatcher that is unable to get a hold of either of this town's cops, starts calling parents to tell them what's going on. What an awkward fucking call. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay, there's no cops there. It's like, now you will beat the police there, almost certainly. <laughs> right? I just, I want to, I've seen her going like, okay, first promise not to be mad. Uh, so. so there's a terrorist bomber. No time to explain. Bye. Yeah, like, right. That's the call. <laughs> yeah. She makes a whole bunch of those. Yeah, and, so and we see like a tense montage of this as well. And a montage of you fawning random people we've not seen before is just not good filmmaking. It's, <laughs> it's a, such a boring scene. I know. And we're watching them all run out the door and we're like, well, yeah, you know. Oh, another one. I bet he runs out the door too. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah. So, and then Doris, that's the female terrorist. She agrees to go get car seat baby and bring him into the bomb area where he'll be safe or she'll be safe. And then we also cut to, um, town hall mobilizing right and i only mention this because there's this weird scene where i guess the mayor or something turns to the dispatcher at lady and says you better let the clergy know too yeah fuck you <laughs> get out of here like they, they shine a big cross sign in the air like batman and like all the clergy <laughs> show up. Oh, this isn't yeah, this like, isn't better, is you it? You better let the clergy know, because if anybody is an expert on the trapping and coercing of children, it would be the clergy. <laughs> like, they know their, like, how to get children out of this situation. They can just talk through their own personal experience. Oh, no, they, they can escape in lots of different ways. Here's, here's a list of 15 ways kids have escaped and um, could, could, could escape. They're fucking slippery. Do you want me to consult? I feel like I'm a consultant on this. Right? All right. All right. So meanwhile, we, we, we cut back to the classroom and we have this sloppy ass fucking line. This is such bad writing. The one teacher turns to another teacher and says, you know, I've read about these types of things before. We won't be in any real trouble until he starts to profusely sweat late in act two. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck are you reading, lady? <laughs> <laughs> OK, but those are. Standard, like, TSA guidelines, I'm pretty sure. I get side-tackled constantly at the airport. I think that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whereas Prince Andrew in, uh, can just go straight through all the time because he can't sweat, so it, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now Ben, who we, the, the stoned teacher that Marsh was talking about, I had him down as Skippy throughout my notes. <laughs> he realizes that the kids are getting sick because the, the gasoline in the bomb is dripping, right? And so the, the fumes are, are making the kids sick. And he's like, hey, man, do you uh, do you mind if we maybe open the windows, vent it a little bit, right? Yeah, so, so we know after the fact that's what he was doing when he was looking around at the sick kids. But all we see him do is look around vaguely confused. And I thought, is he still trying to add those seven numbers up in his head? <laughs> but he still hasn't got to 98. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but but so after an evil monologue about how he brought a big gun for shooting grown-ups he eventually uh, agrees to allow the windows to to be opened up <laughs> which is gonna let the angels in hello <laughs> movie it's go hey just one more question mr terrace can we have class outside <laughs> <laughs> What am I, a substitute terrorist? No, you cannot have class outside. <laughs> I wasn't reborn yesterday with the calculator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so meanwhile, the, the principal is still on the phone with Nadine, the dispatcher, which is weird because we've seen her call a bunch of people since he called her. Oh, yeah. So I guess she put his ass on hold, right? She's yeah, he was on hold. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking to himself like, you know what? This music's inappropriate for this situation. <laughs> Write that down. All right. So now we cut to Ron the cop, the, the protagonist-ish, and he finally is bothering to pick up his radio. So the, the lady's like, hey, how close are you to the elementary school? And he's like, hours away. And she's like, huh, aren't you being paid right now to be here in our town? And he's like, yeah, it's going to look real awkward if they end up making a movie about this, huh? I was checking on trees, whatever. I'll be there in a minute. I'll be there in a minute. He's yeah, two, two hours two away. Hours. When he said, I'm two hours away, this is the first jet, like absolute laugh out loud moment of the film for me because I thought that was such <laughs> a ridiculous detail. And you know that that's because this is 
based on a true story. And I don't think he can explain away him not being around. So he had to be honest about the fact that he was two hours away as what seems like the town's yes. only police officer, but he still wanted to tell his story. So, oh God, two hours. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Right. Yeah. So he's like, we, we learn here. He's like, well, I will not be able to make it for the movie. <laughs> yeah. So now we cut back to the classroom. All the kids are gathered around crazy guy and they're making annoying noises and stuff. And then we get this one kid, and I love this line so much. Again, like the humor works in this movie from the kids. The ga- the kid, uh, he goes, your breath smells like peaches. And the guy goes, I haven't been eating peaches. He goes, peaches is the name of my dog. Zing. <laughs> Zing. I love the word. It's like, it's like they just got me and Eli and Heath and Tom and Cecil to gather around this guy for the entire <laughs> hostage situation. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but then Skippy uh, comes up. He's like, hey, guys, I would I got a great idea for a game called uh, Don't Stare Down the Psychopath with the Kill Trigger Bomb. <laughs> oh, this is where he makes the magic square, right? The magic square. And by that I mean square. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. But but for kids. But it's not clear that the terrorist understands that. Because the terrorist we said, like, let's do a magic square, and the terrorist seems into it. But I think that's because he's thinking, Yeah, you got down right on a magic square. That's the least that I want around here. <laughs> <laughs> that has four sides. Wow, he fucking added those. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so he makes a big square out of masking tape and he says, all right, kids, only people with giant bombs are allowed to go into this area. (laughs) So like to keep the kids away from him. (laughs) <laughs> and there, so they, somebody like brings a desk in for him to sit on, and I so wanted Skippy to like tell, yell at him, like "You're out! I ah, gotcha, gotcha, dumbass! You walked into this square, the fucking desk, <laughs> asshole." Anyway, and then we get the scene where um where Doris is telling the kids how awesome it's going to be to be atrocity victim famous. <laughs> yeah, and at one point somebody's like, "Hey, lady, um, is this your first kidnapping terrorist bomb elementary school thing and she's like kind of bashful about it she's like yeah technically like am i not am i not being cool about it like where, where, where should i stand you know i'm going in the magic square you can't i'm going in i'm allowed and then this is where the the greatest character in the movie again the little girl the pedantic little girl is like you use the word so four times in one sentence that's just bad word choice <laughs> and, and the teacher like whispers t- to Doris, like, "Yeah, shoot her first if you do the like every ten minutes." Like, <laughs> I mean, Doris very much gives her a look like you've made a very powerful enemy today. <laughs> <laughs> look, Doris shoots her. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, little girl, you also made a very powerful friend. I will take a fucking bullet for this little girl. Yeah. <laughs> but the teacher's like, "Hey, Jenny, Jenny, look at me. Let's play a little game called Shut the Fuck Up About Word Choice Forever." <laughs> All right, and then we get this bizarre scene again because this is based on a true story and they have to admit this where all the first responders except the police show up, right? Like the <laughs> health inspector that goes to restaurants and makes sure there's no rats in them beat the cops to this fucking thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's a really small thing, but they've got like a loud hailer. I think it's the fire, fire truck putting out a loud hailer warning. And the warning they're putting out is way too wordy. It's yes! Like, it, it will hurt your children if you try and push past the barricades in order to make it to the school ground which in which in within which your children are currently being held against their will. I repeat. It's like, just Sorry. Get back is all Wait. you want to say. Did you say push past the barricades? Or did you say, there was like, you did a double knot. You used a knot like four times in that sentence. Just so you know. So. Yeah. But basically they're saying like, everybody don't interfere. The, the cops are... Well, the cop is going to be here in a couple of hours. Yeah, exactly. Um, we thought about calling the next town over, but it's literally called Ham's Fork. So <laughs> we're going to wait. Probably won't help. That's a that's a true fact. The closest town Amazing. to Cokeville, Wyoming is Ham's Fork. Yeah. Wyoming. <laughs> I don't think I trust their cops either. All right. And then there's this weird fucking scene where the old teacher lady has to be heroic. Right. So she comes to like offer first she offers her life in place of all the kids. And then she has this weird I'll do whatever it takes, takes out her dentures, you get what I mean kind of moment, right? That is so weird. Like she was offering to fuck <laughs> this guy, right? Oh, a hundred percent. One hundred percent. All right. Yeah, it, that's what I thought. It was pretty sexual. Okay. <laughs> all right. 
but what we see now is that the bad guy is sweaty. <laughs> uh oh. Everybody makes some paper fans so that he's not <laughs> sweating and then means he won't blow us up. <laughs> Sweat is the crucial factor here. Also, by the way, is Sneezy Kid intentionally sneezing to fuck with him when his hand is close to the trigger? Absolutely. Is that Okay, all right. That's what I thought. And this was, again, hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. So. Terrorist guy gets angry again because he didn't realize the daycare element of this whole plot. <laughs> so he's pissed and he's like, I'm a genius. I can't think around here. Everybody shut up. And then Jason, the little guy, roasts him some more. <laughs> he's like, bro, are you are you still working out parts of your plan right now? <laughs> like, <laughs> think this through. <laughs> but then we see the like pin pull situation where, you know, the rope is getting a little bit far away. And then one other kid next to Jason sneezes right there and he almost pulls the pin. <laughs> if that had caused the explosion and then credits, best fucking movie oh, I've ever seen. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and then we get the fucking all the kids playing like a, a, a rousing game of see how close we can get into the psychopath's personal space. Right? <laughs> <laughs> They're all like pushing their feet in there going like, hey, look, if I don't touch my foot down, my foot is over the magic square, but not in the magic square. And the math genius guy sitting there going, God damn it, it is just over the square. It's not in the fucking square. <laughs> oh, oh, fucking technicality. Oh, the airspace. Also, it's a cube. It's a cube now. It's a cube now. It's magic a magic cube. cube. That was the problem. Ben did not go 3D on his magic. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, so we're, we're doubling down at this point on the the way the terrorist guy is starting to unravel, and this film is making it really clear that believing you can die and then come back to life is a sign that you're mentally ill, which would be fine, except that this is going to be a religious film. It's <laughs> going to come back and bite them. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, they get writer, but not on purpose. Yeah, but then we we have the moment where like David goes all Joe Pesci, you know? Are you laughing at me? Am I funny? To you funny like a clown you know or whatever <laughs> or he screams at the kids you think this is silly try putting your foot in the magic cube one more time try it see what happens <laughs> this is serious oh my god i loved it yeah this was like basically not touching can't get mad i was so happy about all these little roast moments they're the best these little kids yeah but so but he needs to walk it off but and by walk it off i mean take a shit so the terrorist guy gets up and he and he grabs his, his girlfriend and he says hey you have to hold on to the dead man switch and she's like well then it's a dead woman switch he's like whatever <laughs> everyday <is> sexism <laughs> and, <laughs> and so she puts it on and he says like hey whatever you do don't move your hand more than this far don't even scratch your nose and then he wanders off to the bathroom now old lady denture blowjob teacher figures this is her opportunity right so she goes to chat it up with doris and try to like calm her down see if maybe she can talk her into wheeling that bomb out of the classroom full of children and there's this frustrating and i like sorry but there's this really frustrating like childless people lack empathy don't they moment that the two of them share oh yeah absolutely it, that is that is infuriating yeah it, i'm so fucking sick of that she's like you have children right and she's like yeah and she's like yeah people without children wouldn't understand why it's bad to come into an elementary school with a bomb they, we, <laughs> i feel like we do understand that but at any rate you know so this doesn't go anywhere right she doesn't convince doris to do anything good but doris is like Simon says, hands on your nose. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she fucking decides to show everybody how big the headache that has Excedrin written all over it is, <laughs> and the fucking bomb explodes. Okay, so I knew, I, I checked the note, I checked Wikipedia, I knew at this point the bomb was going to go off. I still was not prepared for how brutally this bomb goes off and how quickly. I, I gen my notes is like, fucking hell, movie. I was not expecting that level of bomb going off. Yeah, no shit. No, especially because it happens two thirds of the way through the movie, right? You kind yeah. of assume that's going to happen at the end, but no. So yeah, so the bomb goes off, we get the panicky retreat. Now, and this is this is true. This is how the this actually went down, right? The bomb set the the woman, the Doris, on fire, and she was you know burning and dying immediately afterwards. Yeah, and it, they they do a job with that. I mean that that they do that they do that, and I was not prepared for that. And then David comes out the toilet, sees that, and just shoots like it's a fucking zombie film. I'm like, oh fuck, what's happened to this film? Yeah, yeah. We've, we've, 
10 seconds and we've ch- totally changed. Yeah, Dave walks out and he's like, oh, I knew I should have taken a shit before we left. Like, <laughs> I, I only had to go a little bit. I didn't want, you know, you force it. You don't want to, because you get that weird thing. Ah. And he, he's more angry about the air not burning than anything else. You can see him looking around being like, why is the air not burning? God damn it. <laughs> Yeah, and so he shoots some teacher that's trying to remove a bunch of barricades and uh, the kids are all running around and everything and and chaotically trying to get out. Then we cut back to the cop, right? And the cop just finds out that the bomb goes off. And so he yells at God. And I got to say, I don't know that I have ever seen an actor underwhelmed to that degree, right? Usually when you have that big moment and a bad actor, they overact. Mm-hmm. This guy did the exact opposite to a ridiculous degree. It looked to an, oh, shucks, God, kind of a degree. (laughs) Yeah, to a point where I thought for a second when he's saying, how could you let this happen because you're not even there? I thought he was still talking to Nadine down the police radio. (laughs) Nadine, Nadine, oh, you're not even there. Jesus. (laughs) The bomb went off in the elementary school. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed, though. I will say (laughs) I'm disappointed. Jesus, he goes, I bet you don't even exist, God, do you? Existence contest, go, I win, fuck you. And that's because that's how atheism works. And then the terrorist guy, David, goes back into the bathroom to shoot himself. Oh, I really wanted him to take out a calculator and shoot himself in the head with the calculator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, in a sane movie, we'd, we'd have a wrap-up scene and then the credits, but... We're about to learn this ain't no sane movie, so we're going to pause right there. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Were any children killed in the explosion? How about that teacher that got shot? Will this movie make with those details quickly so you can just get on with writing fucking jokes? (laughs) Find out the answers to those questions are no when we return for the Be Reasonable-esque conclusion of... The Cokeville Miracle. (laughs) It's like you've been training your whole life to watch the third act of this, (laughs) Mars. All right, we're finally doing it. This is so exciting. We're going to open up our very own fireworks store. Balloon spectacle. The air will burn. Okay, so let's. So sorry, um, Dave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You say something about the air will burn just now. What? No, you said. You just you just said no. I definitely okay. Okay, whatever. Weird. Uh, So let's talk about what we should get for July Fourth. What was your favorite kind of firework when you were a kid? Just like shout them out. Oh, I loved a a bottle rocket. Okay, bottle rockets. Yeah, nice. Uh, And and, and streamers. Streamers are good for kids. Yeah, streamers for little kids. Perfect. Um, hey, Dave. Dave. Um, what you doing with the calculator? And I've defeated death. QED. I'm sorry, what's that, Steve? <sighs> Did you say you defeated death? Nope. Okay, Alan, you, you heard that, right? He said that? Yeah, yeah. Look, you definitely mumbled, I defeated death, QED. Yeah. No. No. Yeah, and you said QED. Okay. Didn't. Well, it just feels like you're not focused on the new store. No, no, I'm good. I'm totally focused. You're totally focused? Okay, all right. So uh, what about a name for... I'm going to blow up an elementary school. (sighs) All right, you want to call it a day? Start fresh tomorrow. We're going to call it a day. Dave, maybe pray about that last thing. Um, Mental health care isn't real. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to open up a couple days after all the interesting parts of the story are over (laughs) oh i was so mad here i had this realization i was just like fuck all right the whole rest of the movie is going to be apologetics for a kid bombing that's yep we have a half (laughs) hour of that here yep they're gonna jingle keys at us i was i was just hoping the one saving grace would be that the dad hadn't made it home yet so i said yeah i'm I'm stuck in traffic this is this is really bad (laughs) all right so the dumb kid from before jason He's watching I Got Blown Up on the news. Uh, He's got a bandaged hand. And apparently he's been non-responsive and watching cops ever since the the bombing, both of which would be disturbing trends in a child. So, yeah, I get it. (laughs) 
Maybe get him some Thomas the Tank Engine or something. I don't know. Don't have him watch Cops. <laughs> yeah. And I also love how, like, annoyed they are that he isn't all right yet. It's like, what? Well, I, I don't understand. He was blown up. It's been like three days, two days maybe. This is, is he should be over this by now. Other kids bounce back from a bombing. Is he going to bitch about this all week? Is he going to ruin his whole fucking week if he doesn't get over <laughs> this shit? <laughs> Jesus. And the dad, there's this great moment where the dad's like, it's my fault for not being there. And I'm like, normally when a dad says that, he's wrong. (laughs) (laughs) No, it is your fault. Definitely your fault, dude. That was You didn't need to take that long of a shit two hours away just because you really (laughs) like the gas station bathroom there. That's weird. (laughs) All right. And there's also this weird moment where we like, we do an extreme close up on the kids' PTSD <laughs> for a second. That was bizarre. <sighs> so they take the kid to see a therapist, and there's really almost no need for the no reason for this scene at all because like it's just the dad waiting in the therapist waiting room, and the, mm. the therapist comes out and says, You're gonna have to have a scene after this where you talk to your son. <laughs> But this, the dad has this uh, exchange with the receptionist at the, uh, the therapist and he's been in there for like two hours. Should I be worried he's been in so long? And she just silence. I thought, ah, yeah, that's harsh. So <laughs> in any of the world, she'd be like, no, no, there's nothing to worry about. Just like stony face silence stares him down. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Two hours. Would you say that's a long time, officer, Ron? <laughs> two hours? Is that long? <laughs> like, I just wanted to say, yeah, it's really weird. Like, normally the kids are like 10 minutes, so it's really strange that he's taken... Your kid must be really fucked up. <laughs> so, yeah, so so they go home to chat, invoking a whole nother goddamn scene for some reason. I feel like <laughs> this could have just been an extension of the one before last, and we could have skipped the therapist. But now it's time for the dad and the mom and the kid to have the there were angels in the movie the whole time talk. Uh, and there's just a little exchange between the dad and the mum here. And first of all, the mum is cleaning the mirror of the house. And I think that's because they were like low on time in the property they'd rented to shoot this film in, so they had to double up on time. It's like, you're, you're going to act and clean at this point. We need to get this back. So we, 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 we literally can't afford to lose our deposit on this shoot. We've got to get this cream good. <laughs> and she also says, you know, don't interrogate him like he's a suspect. And I just so badly wanted to cut to the dad brutalising him in custody. They're really going to town on this kid. (laughs) Sliding him a juice box across the table, pulling it back. No, no. (laughs) Not yet. So the kid comes in and he's like, you know, there's something that I really want to talk to you about. They're like, it's okay. You can talk to us about anything. And he goes, it's about that day with the explosion. I was like, well, fucking course it is, man. I mean... (laughs) So, but he says, you know, what I never told you guys, because I just made this up afterwards, is that there were angels in the room dressed all in white. And the angel said, go stand by the window. And that's the reason the kids were standing by the window. Not the fact that it was a room filled with gasoline fumes and the kids were vomiting if they didn't, but because the angels told them. Yeah, and there's there's a thing that we will never confront in this entire film, in this entire story about how the kids, midway through this hostage negotiation siege thing, started seeing angels, is that they only started seeing the angels after they were starting to inhale a lot of gasoline fumes to the point right. they were starting to get lightheaded and right. sick. Right! Like, Could those be related at all? At all? Nah. Nah. <laughs> Well, and then to to really show you what a bizarre ass fucking story we're dealing with and why you can't trust any goddamn thing that anyone involved with says immediately when the kid says there was somebody dressed all in white and it was an old lady. The mom runs and gets a photo album and says it was it any of your dead relatives in this book. <laughs> right? Which is probably exactly what really happened, right? Like oh, yeah. all of these kids were like, yeah, there was just like there was like there was a presence and the parents were like, was it like Jesus Christ exactly? And the kids were like, sure. Right? <laughs> anyway, yeah, and it's like, why didn't you tell us this before? And it's like, because I hadn't made it up then. Come yeah, on, give right. me time. Because <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> You've already seen that I'm not a smart child. It takes me longer to make stuff up. <laughs> also, you guys didn't think about talking to me about the bomb until the therapist told you That's, that. Yeah, there was also idea. that. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, um, 
the mom, when he identifies the which which dead relative it was, the mom says, and I quote, I think that's too much of a coincidence to be a coincidence. Oh, what? God, that what? made me feel ill because this has been like the dad's catchphrase whenever yeah. anybody says, I love you. And the thing is, every single time one of his kids says, I love you, and he says, well, that's too much of a coincidence to be a coincidence, the kid looks at him like, what? And just like sad <laughs> and confused <laughs> and disappointed. It's like this, and you just know that this was a line that they were always going to pay off and even the child actors knew it was dumb and could not muster yes. up any enthusiasm for it. Right, oh, yeah. Right, but but the wife looks at the camera and winks. She's like, <laughs> coincidence, be coincidence. Ding, callback. No, da, 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 da. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so then late that night, mom and dad are wondering why a movie would introduce this plot so late in the game. <laughs> And and they're, the dad's like, you know, you know, I know he says he has a magical friend, but I don't know if I believe him. And the mom is like, you don't believe your own son. <laughs> He's like, about ghosts? No. <laughs> no. She's like, is this because you're a cop? You fucking cop? And he's like, no. Because you guys are all bastards. Up. That's what I heard. It's just that I'm a grown up. Okay. That's the thing is like, because she's like, you don't believe your own son. And I thought, do you always believe him every time? Because no wonder this kid is such a fuck up that he doesn't know anything about the president. He doesn't know anything about the state he lives in because his mum is just credulous to anything this kid says. Right. She's like, I didn't realize the capital of Wyoming was W. It is, I guess. I just <laughs> I wouldn't, wouldn't want to doubt my own son. So, yeah. So, like, he's like, yeah, you know, even though my kid who is suffering like severely traumatized said later that while he was huffing a bunch of fucking explosion fumes he saw angels i'm not entirely convinced and the mom's like so you're gonna treat your son like a criminal he's like how how so how is that <laughs> wait hold on and he basically says well you know i'm trained that way i'm trained to want proof and he might as well add and that's a bad thing that's a bad thing <laughs> <laughs> right also trained to shoot black people, but we're not going to deal. That's a different, <laughs> totally different thing uh, than what we're dealing with in this movie. And the mom is like, but what if other children who were traumatized and high on gasoline fumes also saw inexplicable things? And he's like, well, in that case, I guess that'd be proof of God. Huh? Existence. <laughs> All right. God. You know what? I'm on board. I'm going to go around town and investigate <laughs> angel yes! stuff. Yes. Yes. I'm a police officer. <laughs> That's exactly That's it. what happens now. That's, yeah. he's, she says, well, your job is to investigate. You're the town's investigator. And he's like, I guess I should go find out if it was angels then, shouldn't I? All right. <laughs> I'm going to start with that gas station all the way out of town. So <laughs> yeah, there. right. They, they can't get this guy when there's a goddamn bomb in the elementary school. But now we learn what we pay him for. Yeah, Jesus fucking Christ. But things we, we've met then, we've met two people who we've established have been part of this police force. One thinks it's his job to go around investigating angels, and the other thinks he can reincarnate himself with maths and decides to blow up a school. This right. is not the absolute <laughs> pinnacle of the profession. <laughs> Be the best. Yeah, this is like the D-team terrorist versus the D-team police. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, yeah, so he goes off to ask tra traumatized eight-year-olds if they have any confirmation of his religion. But we're going to start with the principal, right? And I love this line so goddamn much. This is the exact fucking question that he asked the principal. He says, speaking of the day that the terrorist bomb showed up in his school, did you see anything out of the ordinary? <laughs> is that your... No, that again, Wyoming, you know, <laughs> salt rifles... Homemade bombs, but nothing weird. <laughs> so, okay. So now we're going to start laying out all the evidence that this was angelic or divine. You know, uh, again, let's keep in mind, an omnipotent God could have given him a flat tire and had a cop within three and a half hours of the school. <laughs> but exhibit A is the miraculous way that the fire alarm kept going off by accident right before that so that all the kids were all prepped for an emergency. But they weren't. No. They weren't. We saw the fire alarm go off before, and they all walked out of the, the classroom with their arms folded slowly. And the principal says they learned to get out of the room quickly, to crawl, to find death. It's like, movie, you remember you showed us that, and we did <laughs> see this. We did see that's not how that happened. You could have showed them doing that, but they didn't. Yeah, I don't think... 
they do drills for that. Either. They do like fire drills, not like a bomb has now exploded. <laughs> What's the best way to get out yeah. now with the air on fire? <laughs> right. And then and the principal goes, and you know what? After the building exploded, that stopped happening altogether. Why? <laughs> 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 And then, oh, God, and the exhibit B is even dumber. He goes, and also, here's something inexplicable, the magic square. How could that teacher have possibly known that having kids right next to the homemade bomb with the dead man trigger on a schizophrenic would be bad? Maybe that teacher knew how to integrate E to the next. <laughs> <laughs> And the cop says, well, but couldn't that just be coincidences? And the principal's like, I don't think things just coincide <laughs> with each other. Do they? I fucked up my, that fucked up my whole religion, actually. So, so he talks to the principal. Then he goes to talk to the fucking bomb expert. Oh, I love the bomb expert so much. Oh, well, hey, okay, so, Marsh, this is the fucking foremost expert in all of Lincoln County, Wyoming, on explosives, okay? So don't you start giving him shit. Yep. His opening line is, when that bomb went off, there shouldn't have been any survivors, and then every other line is an explanation of why that's wrong. <laughs> well, yeah, this bomb expert policeman, again, this is like a high-ranking policeman, is like, all right, let me list some angel stuff for you. <laughs> so... The windows were open. The milk jug was leaking. So the movie is saying that God was watching a terrorist bomber <laughs> of an elementary school yes. getting ready for his thing and being like, okay, you know, it'd be hilarious. A slightly inefficient gasoline container. This is going to be great. This is going to be such a good <laughs> prank. Yeah. Exhibit C, the milk jug that he got from a dump had a hole in it, miraculously. <laughs> and I love the fact that as we're talking through all these different pieces, the movie's going back over showing us each little bit of the bomb like it's the twist in a heist movie. Like we're finding out exactly yes. who did do the crime the entire time. It's, it's so good. It's so good. And then, yeah, Exhibit D is that ventilation existed the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Exhibit E is that only two of the five blasting caps went off. And I'm like, yeah, what possible explanation could there be for that bomb not being top notch, even though that guy could add seven two digit numbers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he says it's it's not that the wires were like uh, frayed. They were cut as if they were clipped with wire cutters. It's like, who could have done that? Because all we know is that the bomb was built by a crazy person and transported in the back of a van containing two men who wanted nothing to do with the bomb and then left in the care of a daughter who also wanted nothing to do with the bomb. It must have been angels. That is the bomb. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. And then only angels would know which color to cut. So. <laughs> but we only found lefty scissors in that kindergarten room. What are the odds? <laughs> A lefty kid was able to do that. It's it's not. No, it's and if that is the scissors in that kindergarten room, they would have been those plastic ones that barely even cut paper. They're not making it through right, the entire yeah, wire. Yeah, exactly. It must have been angels. <laughs> <laughs> and then exhibit fucking. I guess we're up to F now. Exhibit F is that the shrapnel from the bomb because he had a bunch of like bullets and shit that were supposed to be shrapnel. All of that missed all of the people in the room except. When it didn't and it hit them. <laughs> right? Like, cause that's his, he, he's like, think about all the shrapnel that missed all the people. And the guy's like, well, what about the shrapnel that hit him? He's like, no, I'm talking about the shrapnel that didn't. <laughs> think about all of that shrapnel. Just, if you just think okay. about that shrapnel, it's miraculous. Yeah. No, I finished up thinking about it. Now uh, I'd like to dwell on the, the hits. <laughs> <laughs> You're very sleepy. And we've got to talk about the whiteboard as well. Yes. Oh, God. That was so fucking hard for me to ignore. So, there's a point where we zoom in on his face and the only thing that you can see on the whiteboard behind him, it's got other words. These are just the first few words of two different sentences, but they just read when we see them all cut off. It just says, doors open, retarded. And I'm having trouble focusing on, on anything else. Wait, what? Because it, it says, it, it said doors open for ventilation, retarded the fire, retarded the explosion or something like yeah. that. But it zooms in and it's just like, doors open, retarded. Weird phrasing. It said like windows open on the whiteboard behind in, in the entire scene. It said like windows open. Then it says doors open. It said dash less explosive confinement exclamation mark. And it was like the uh, bomb experts kind of verdict, but it just looked like it was there so that the actor playing his cop could remember his cues. So, like, <laughs> these, are, these are the words that are going to come up and you have lines after that. 
Off you go. Doors open. Angels? Question mark? <laughs> like, what? Yeah, I, I love the idea, too, that this bomb expert had to walk over to his whiteboard and go, hmm, doors open. <laughs> Windows open. Hold on. I'm seeing a fucking pattern. Here. <laughs> what are the odds on that? That's like one in four. That's like half of each state of windows and doors. Both were on tails. That's like two tails in a row. I mean, the dollars could have been a jar. In fairness, there's a third state we could oh, have shit. thrown in there to really fuck with things. <laughs> so, yeah, so he interviews the, the principal. He interviews the bomb expert. So he goes back to his wife, and they present those in- interviews as, like, him reporting all of this back to his wife. <laughs> and she's like, she has this great moment, and they try to sell this so hard because this is the crux of their entire argument. They're like, it doesn't make any sense that someone so genius that he could add seven two digit numbers together wouldn't think to make sure that he didn't have a leaky milk jug bomb. He's right? immortal from math. He's that good at math. He can't <laughs> die. Yeah, yeah. The wife's like, he wasn't that stupid. It's like, no, he was a real genius. He could count to ninety eight like. That. And so he's just right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so again, and, and here's what really happened, right? The guy had been making these homemade bombs. He tested one in a school bus and it worked really, really well in a school bus because the school bus is a completely sealed environment. Yeah. Right? When he tried to do the same thing in a building with windows and doors open, the bomb went pretty much straight up, right? Took out a bunch of roof tiles like bombs tend to do if they're not tamped. And that's what fucking happened. And they're trying to sell that as the miracle right now. What that tells you, among a a number of things, is this guy wasn't very smart. Yeah. Yeah. That that is just one of the pieces of evidence that suggests he wasn't smart. Yeah. Another one being he thought he could mathematically prove his own (laughs) reincarnation, which is a bit of a giveaway. Yes. And, And he kept saying the air will burn, which I've never met a smart person say that more than once. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> oh, and Exhibit G, we have to point this out. The cop says, and you know what? In his journal, all the bombs he tested always worked. What are the odds that the one time it wouldn't work was this time? And I'm like, well, or he didn't write down I fucked up again for posterity. <laughs> it could also be that. What we saw was uh, he said trial number four perfect and he seemed surprised that it was perfect so we know all the time he bragged about all the times he built and tested bombs it was three because he did trial <laughs> right <four>. yeah <laughs> <laughs> but this is insane to the cops and and to the wife like the idea is that he was batting a thousand on exploding bombs i feel like that's not that hard like you're gonna make an explosion happen <laughs> well right regardless right an explosion happened on this also, one. he's still batting a thousand yeah that right. happened. <laughs> but like they're saying, like, well, if you compare that to, you know, Wiley Coyote numbers, um, another super genius, by the way. <laughs> it's way too high to explain a misfire. He's been a thousand. So and then the cop says, and this is actually a great point. He says the cop goes, Hey, you know, unexplainable things happen all the time, which is very much true. But this one is explainable, so it's even easier, right? Those happen <laughs> even more often than the unexplainable things. <laughs> Jesus. And then here's the most terrifying thing in the movie to me. And this is a movie where a guy walks into a fucking elementary school with a homemade bomb and a dead man switch. The scariest part is where the cop goes to interview the other children to ask if they saw any apparitions mm. that day. Yeah. Right. And, and you've got girl Noah, who it turns out was also traumatized enough to either lie or be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant evidence. Right, right, exactly. And the, uh, the, you know, she's like, yep, there was an angel there, told me I would be okay, and then disappeared all Batman style. Like I looked away and then just wasn't there. <laughs> and then my brother said, hey, come to the window. How would he have known? Right. <laughs> And and again, and again, the fucking, the mom in this scene runs and grabs her family a photo album and says, is there any dead people that that person that you saw looked like? Any dead people in this book that could validate my religion? Yeah. Was this, was this the exact angel that you saw? And the girl's like, yes, 100%. And at this point, I wanted so bad for Atheist Dad to make him do an angel lineup. <laughs> 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 
Oh, and the thing is, it's not even out of a photo album that they reckon that they're, that they're sort of uh, recognising this uh, angel. It's from a locket, but the movie goes way out of the way to make a big deal about how like hidden away the locket was. It's in a drawer. It's underneath oh, some stuff. Yeah. It's like hidden inside some paper wrapping. It's like it's as if the movie's yelling. You see, there's no way this kid could ever have seen it, so it must be true. It's oh, it's, it's working way <laughs> way too hard. And again, the the thing that the, that the kid could never have seen is a picture of her grandmother. Yes. Give me a fucking yeah. break. This is the one picture they have of grandma. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> or lying. Yeah. If it, regardless of whether he's seen it. Right, yeah. right, exactly. And then, so, and, and by the way, exhibit I is just that her sister says yes after all of that. Right, the other in the girl creepiest way as well. Her yeah. sister has seen like this. It seems like this is not the first explosion her sister has seen. Like she is <laughs> a veteran who's like got long term PTSD, and she's just staring off in the middle distance. <laughs> she was fucked up over in Ham Fork. Yeah, we. Yeah. Had some shit. <laughs> she's a veteran of Ham. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we cut back to the uh, him explaining all of these interviews to the wife, and he's like, you know, and the and the Swanson girl said a woman helped her out of the room too, and I'm like, yeah, but there were women helping children out of the room there. That is exactly. <laughs> That's a great point. But, I mean, why? And she's and then she's like, and then she got out and she looked up and she couldn't find the woman anymore. And I'm like, it was smoky, right? Like the woman just that's not even that's not even a dead person anyway. But fucking, but mom is hundo P on the miracle hypothesis, right? Oh yeah, no, she's, she's a fucking idiot. Right? She's like, I, a fucking lady who was there and then not there. Lady. Are you trying to tell me that there are mobile ladies and low visible fires? Give me a fucking break. Get out of here with this bullshit. Cop. You're a cop. <laughs> Fuck you, cop. Such a Kamala cop. Kamala Harris. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, and he has such a weird line here as well. Cause the wife says like, huh. So again, it was an ancestor. And he says, yeah, what's that about? And that is such a weird question. Like, <laughs> I mean, I can accept angels coming back to help kids, but I just don't get why would they be family angels? That's what's going <laughs> on. That's the weird, it's the darndest <laughs> thing. Should be generic angels. Shouldn't also, it? we're learning that some of these kids saw angels of their mm -hmm. ancestors and some didn't. That means some of these kids, either their entire ancestry is still alive <laughs> or their, their entire ancestry didn't really care about yeah, the following thing. Right, right, was exactly. Like, I'm doing angel stuff today. I don't know. It's not. Somebody's well, some uncle of their ancestors were like two hours away and they're like, oh shit, there's a bomb. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm stuck behind this cop in traffic. I don't know what's happening. You know, you, you know how you can't pass cops even if they're going slow? Ugh. So, yeah, so the cop's like, you know, I'm not entirely sure. And she yells, you're such a cop. I heard you're such a cock, which made a very <laughs> different movie for just a second. But I went back. It was cop. And she's like, you know, your problem is that you lack the humility to assume that the creator of the goddamn universe bent the laws of physics to specifically involve himself in your goddamn life like an asshole. So, yeah. You haven't got the humility to thank God for blessing us and indeed for putting us in this situation in the first place. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So, so the cop's like, Hey, son, come downstairs. Is there any other angel evidence that you were saving for later in act three? And the son's like, Yeah, actually there was. Um, all the angels look like light bulbs. Yeah, that was a little bit like when you're playing like uh, Skyrim or an RPG or something like that, and you haven't clicked through all the question options. Yes, you're like, yeah, right. I don't understand. There's definitely some information I'm missing here. And like, Hang on. Oh, there's a line that was lit up that I haven't clicked. Hang on. Oh. Yes. <laughs> this is an amazing moment too. The movie confuses the fuck out of itself. So the kid says. Yeah, I saw a bunch of angels coming through the ceiling. <laughs> they looked mm -hmm. like light bulbs. And then the dad, a cop, <laughs> is like, yeah, I can't think of how lights might be on a ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm starting to come around. Well, this is the thing is, he, he shows the kid a light bulb. What, yes! what, you mean like this? And the kid's like, yes! no, lit up. He's like, come on, kid, you know what I meant. <laughs> Don't be a dick about this. Yeah, we always implied that it could be lit up. God damn it. 
It's like a so, literal light bulb moment. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the light bulb really does come on premiere. But then here's how stupid this fucking evidence is. The kid says, yeah, I saw a bunch of angels float down like big lights and they surrounded the explosion and pushed it up into the air so that it would go up instead of out. And then the kid leaves and the mom's like, there's no way he could have known that the explosion would have gone through the roof tiles uh, without us explaining. I'm like, he was there. <laughs> he saw it explode. Like, let's assume, because this kid didn't know the capital of Wyoming. He grew up there. I get like that he's not the brightest fucking kid and might not know just intuitively that explosions go up, right? <laughs> but if the, even even if he didn't, he watched it happen. If there weren't angels there, he still would have seen up. <laughs> I want to see these angels meeting up before the bomb <laughs> <laughs> to be like, hey, oh, are you here for the bomb? Me too. Okay, get out of here. Cool. Let's the bomb. We're going to do that. So I was thinking <laughs> we make it go up. Up. Blocking it. Up, you say, huh? And everybody's like, all right, well, no, why don't we just stop it? Not it, The bomb doesn't go off. There's a bunch of things we could do where the bomb doesn't go off. <laughs> like we cut all the wires. Oh, I was thinking cut good. two of the wires. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know what, Dottie? You, you're really making it weird. You're, you're just complicating it a lot more. You said I could do it. It's my one time. You said it was my turn. <laughs> oh, you know what it is? It's because they had some arsehole angels, angels there, and they had to come to, like, a consensus. So, oh, right, yeah. We, we stopped the bomb. No, no, I, I want the bomb to be bigger. Right. Like, hours what? later, you've got, like, an angel, like, putting out its 15th cigarette, stubbing <laughs> it out in a full ashtray. <laughs> Guys, okay, how about this? We, we make it go up and we cut all of the wires. Not all the wires. Two of the wires. We cut two, two of the wires. Right, we're doing two? Okay. <laughs> God damn it. No, I know it's your turn, but we we normally do like, you know, coin flip stuff. Like, this is a bomb. <laughs> all right. So we, um, we cut back to the bomb expert guy to really drill in on the, their shitty evidence. There's just this one moment that I have to talk about where they, where the, Bomb expert says, you know, that man uh, that said that created this bomb had police training. What are the odds he wouldn't do this right? I'm like, do they train you in the police academy how to blow up classrooms with IEDs? <laughs> right, now, don't get me wrong. I, if, in Wyoming, I'd be 12 percent surprised if they did. Right. Like, so I'm not saying that definitely doesn't happen. OK. And th this was a 9-11 conspiracy scene. Right? Yes. So very, it was like the bomb went straight up controlled demolition. Bombs don't go up that fast, do they? <laughs> right. Yeah, it, it's, it's either the 9 11 thing. It's like if you look very carefully, the bomb went up and to the left. Up <laughs> and to the left. <laughs> and you again, know, crayons don't burn that hot. It's <laughs> an established fact. Did you know there were zero Jewish kids at school in Wyoming that day? <laughs> Yeah, but that's every day. <laughs> and again, like, the bomb is not tamped at all. Of fucking course it's going to go up. That's what bombs do. Anyway, so so dad sits there processing all these new fucking light bulb revelations. And he's like, wow, there's no way our kids could have known that explosions went up. That fucking idiot said earlier that Thomas Jefferson was the 18th president. I mean, <laughs> and they're the, they're the first two listed on the chalkboard. And he still said that anyway. Yeah, OK. <laughs> and And then, of course, and then he goes. You know what? There's something else I learned. He turns to the wife and he says that because the writers couldn't think of any other way to present this except for to have him tell it to the camera. Right. <laughs> and, and we watched the, 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 I think they try to make some argument about the, the fact that the kids put their feet in the square. Or so I didn't, I didn't understand what the hell they were trying to say there. So I just left that out. Right. Dad was just like, yeah, I heard Jason was roasting the guy the whole time. And mom's like, <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, how is that a helpful right now, though? And he's like, no, I, I'm just proud. I mean, you know, you fucking ones, I don't know. <laughs> kid might grow to be a podcaster. You never know. Guy does look like a meth version of Sons of Anarchy. He does. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> That's a funny one. And then, okay, so, and then we get Exhibit J, which is my favorite. Oh, yeah. The cop goes like, and here's another proof that this might be divine. All the cops were gone because if I'd been around, I would have. Fuck this all up. <laughs> would have right. been so much worse if I'd been present. <laughs> yeah. Dad's convinced he would have like smashed through the wall like the Kool-Aid man and got everybody killed. <laughs> well, would you? <laughs> and then finally we get to the point that we've been building towards this entire movie apparently. <sighs> Exhibit 
K <laughs> prayer happened. Oh. Jesus Christ. So, yeah, so they, they show all the kids praying. I love the smart kid. Like, well, you should pray. You're the smartest kid. And she's like, that's right. I am the smartest kid. All right, dear God, please allow the gasoline to drip slowly into his flour <laughs> aluminum mixture, turn it into a paste. <laughs> won't aerosolize. The air won't burn. Yeah, that'll piss him off yeah, so bad. Please God, please, God, could you cut the wires, but not all of them, just like some of them? Yeah, a few. <laughs> go, go crazy. Do what you want. <laughs> It's also like the kids say, you should pray, you're the smartest one. And to be honest, I feel like the smartest kid in the class would statistically be less likely to be into the whole prayer yeah, thing. Like, right, yeah, you exactly. Like, you are three above the dumbest kids, so you can lead the rest of us in prayer. That's the level you want to be going for. Oh, man, if pedantic girl had just like pulled up a study on her phone that was like, hey, you know, the Templeton <laughs> Society tried to, to study intercessory prayer. It made it worse for people. It actually made it worse. <laughs> We're not doing that. But again, like the argument that because because he's like, you know, and it wasn't just the kids there that were praying. Everyone in the whole town was praying and like, yeah, when has anybody ever prayed and then not been OK? You proved it. But the other thing that what he's actually admitting is this is a town full of people that are seriously predisposed to interpret things religiously. And therefore, this is in no need of explanation. Right. Yeah. And have a chip on their shoulder about it because we cut yep. to a woman in, like, gathering people together in a different kind of uh, building and she says, we may not be allowed to be on the school grounds and I may be <laughs> fired for doing this, but if oh. anybody wants to, please join me in prayer. It's like, yeah, they would totally fire you for praying while your school was under siege. Those bloody libs. So ridiculous. <laughs> like, literally, she's like, we're not allowed to be on school property. Christianity is illegal, of course, <laughs> here in Wyoming. I'll probably get fired for this. But let's practice a little Christianity okay. secretly. All right. But no, let, let, let me fill you in on what's going on here, because she should have been fired for this. That that was the principal of the high school. That was the principal of the high school in that town leading the kids in the high school in prayer. Yes, oh. that was illegal as all fuck. Oh, yeah. I thought this was just like a group of right. parents meeting no. in a nearby building. That's what I thought at first, yeah, too. too. But yeah, no, but that's the fucking principle because he cuts in right after that. And he's like, the entire high school was praying. And I'm like, oh, my God, is that what we just watched? So you, I went back and watched it again. And yes, that's what that was supposed to be. Uh, that was the yeah, that was the fucking high school principal going like, you know, normally we're a little bit more nice to the one brown kid in the school. But fuck him. Fuck him and his Hindu bullshit. Today, we're all Christian. Yeah, <laughs> cool. <laughs> So this movie was in like 2017, 2016, something like that? I think it was made in 2015. Okay. Yeah. Well, when was the incident? Do you know? Uh, 1984. Nine? nine? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, there haven't been any major like school violence issues since no, then. They must no, have been uh, praying. Uh, so, that was working. <laughs> that, that pretty much solved it. The prayer works so well. Yeah. Right. And then, by the way, so we get this little montage of everybody praying. One of the people who was praying in this montage is Nadine, the dispatcher. Right after she tells the cop that, that the school blew up, she stopped to pray rather than filling him in on the details. Yeah. Yeah. When he's in the car <laughs> saying, why won't you talk to me? Give me more details. And I actually previously had in my notes, well, mate, she's got other priorities. A building, you know, a bomb just went <laughs> off and you're nowhere near. And it's like, she did have other priorities and they were to fucking pray. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. And is this where the cop dad says he tried to pray too, but like couldn't? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, I heard about the bomb. That sounded pretty bad. I thought about praying. I really did. But then, you know, I thought about the origin of species. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't <laughs> do it. It doesn't make sense. And the wife's like, you didn't pray, you fucking asshole. And we see like a montage of other people praying as well. And they said like the whole country was praying, all of America. And we cut to the only black person we've seen in this entire yep. film who slowly goes to prayer. And it's like people around the world are praying. Even Mexicans pray for us. <laughs> yes. It's ridiculous. That was weird. Because it takes a lot to get Mexicans to pray as well. Like you've got to yeah, really right, twist their right. arms yeah, to exactly. start praying. Exactly. I was like, oh, this is a cool montage. Are you going to show some Muslim people praying? No. <laughs> no. Oh, weird. No? Oh, okay. Okay. So, and then, and then he attacks on and he's like, but the most amazing thing of all is how brave everyone is and the way that everyone kept going back in to make sure that the kids were okay before they got themselves to safety. And I'm like, yeah, humanism, dude. <laughs> right, like that makes so much more fucking sense because that can be demonstrated to be real. It actually helps. 
Yeah. But yeah, and if they no. genuinely thought God was saving them, they wouldn't have had to go back in. They'd be like, no, it's fine, right. Jenny's in there, but God's going to sort this out, so I'm just going to run. No, the fact yes. that they went back in proves they didn't think God was going to save them. Exactly. Well, hold on, hold on. <laughs> the, these kids, I think they were thinking about it. So they saw all these angels just peace out right away after the bomb, and they were like, all right, uh, this is on us, I guess, to like clean up the aftermath, right? <laughs> because that's the story, that the angels were like, okay. Bomb went up, nailed it. Later, guys. Yeah, right, right, exactly. All right, but dad isn't quite convinced yet because there's still seven more minutes in this fucking movie. So they go to church. But will dad go in? Yes, he will. So this, I don't know why I brought it up. He is going to go in this time. <laughs> yeah, he's, there's a moment, though, where he, he like almost doesn't. And the wife is like, Ron, get the fuck in the church. Are you serious right now? He's like, uh Still not feeling. So the Kalam cosmological argument, I feel like it falls apart. Like I can't get past the first <laughs> premise. Some things don't have a cause, right? Like that's just, okay, I'm going, I'm going. So, in, I'm going. but, but, and again, like admitting more than you're supposed to in your dumb ass fucking movie, she says, you know, Ron, eventually if you don't join my religion enthusiastically, I'll divorce you. And minutes later he finds God. Yeah, yeah. Right. She's like, you, you know, you, you've got to figure out what's real and what's not in this world. Otherwise, you could lose us. And what she means is up for the not real stuff. That's what she's yeah, exactly towards. right. Yeah, <laughs> and she says, "Ron, you're the greatest man I know, but but we live in a town with a population of five hundred and forty-eight. So that's not saying much, you know." <laughs> so, <laughs> and as we'll find out, a congregation of about twenty people in this. I want to say church. I actually want to say side room from a 1970s hotel conferencing facility. That's <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Right down to having corduroy walls. I just haven't seen that. It was corduroy walls. <laughs> really? Yeah. Is oh, God, I got to go back and look for that. So he walks in. He doesn't feel right in church because God is either non-existent or evil. And the <laughs> so the pastor's going like, yeah, you know, it seems like God could have miracled, you know, before the guy had a bomb in the school at all or, uh, you know, before all the second degree burns and the smoke inhalation. And I shit you not. This was bound to happen eventually if we watched enough fucking movies as the goddamn pastor is saying this. The dad character is literally jingling keys. Yes. <laughs> That's fantastic. Spinning He's actually, speaker. actually holding his keychain, just jingling them around in his head. <laughs> it's so good. And and then so the pastor asks that question, like, why wouldn't God just like stop it before the bomb? Long pause. And then he's like, okay, uh, follow up question to myself. Why would God <laughs> let other kids get killed in other bombings? Another long Ooh, pause. These yeah, great questions, right. mate. These are really good questions. Everybody's like, oh, you're done. I figured you're doing the sermon. Did you? You wrote those questions. You don't have an answer there. <laughs> He goes, but you know, I know a lot of you want to hate those bad guys that traumatized your children and almost killed them and at least tried to, but hating them won't help. My religion will. My religion will help greatly on that. Uh, you have yeah, to, you have to gay people them is, won't yeah. help. Gay people, on the other hand, yeah, now, yeah, that's exactly. where the hate should go. <laughs> hey, Ron, can you come in here? Look at his keys. Look at this guy's <laughs> keys. Mm? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so so dad wanders off from this boring ass sermon and he catches all the kids singing in the fucking kid singing room. And it's I, I have no idea what's going on here. Some of the kids have little Jesus album covers to hold up. Some don't. I don't know what. I don't know what that. Yeah, that was weird. Do they pass out like posters of Jesus to hold up I like at a stadium like they make a. Like a mosaic of Jesus? I don't know. It was that kind of <laughs> that really handsome Jesus picture as well. And the pedantic kid, uh, little Noah, get, like girl Noah's given one. And I really wanted her to point out that Jesus would have been significantly more brown than in that picture. That would have been just the best moment oh, of the film for me. Man, where's her movie? I want right? just a movie about her. Just follow up on that. But here's what we're watching. This scene is a room full of kids with like taped up faces yep. and casts on their yep. arms. From bomb injuries, to be clear, mm -hmm. singing about God's divine plan and how he loves them. That's what's <laughs> happening. That's what that's the scene. Yeah. Am I crazy? <laughs> no, like the, ev every it? kid's like their wounds and bandages all scream. Boy, did God half ass this miracle. And they're holding signs. Right. The one kid has a sign that says, Heavenly Father, are you really there? And do you hear and answer every child's prayer. And I'm like, 
Uh, no, no, and no. Uh, another kid signs us, pray he is there. I'm like, also no and no. This is easy. This is the easiest quiz I've ever taken. <laughs> the one thing I really wanted from this scene as well is that we like cut to uh, the, the front of the room that the kids are looking towards. And I just want to see all the angels there. So sort of, like double thumbs up. <laughs> <They've just come laughs> <in> for... <laughs> Getting a medal from uh, Princess Leia or something. <laughs> <laughs> but then but then this is the moment where dad cop prays outside and becomes religious again and then embraces his children in his glorious new Christianity. And they we get the weird big Christian family hug and then dad leads them in prayer, right? That's pretty much it. That's it. And then of course the movie jumps all over our shit and tries to give a breakfast club close like we're not going to still do that. Right. <laughs> oh, and they should not have. They, this was a big mistake. I mean, the oh, whole yeah. movie's fucking stupid. But then they added like our points to the whole end of the movie. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. So they they give us like here's what happened to a bunch of the characters. It says one teacher got shot with one of the stray bullets that the guy had in a pile that exploded and started going everywhere. It lodged in his shoulder. It actually hit his spine a little bit. I guess his ancestors really hated him. So. <laughs> it also like, said he was back at school three days after getting shot, which is like a really damning indictment of the American medical system. Like right, yeah, exactly. Go back to work. Like he got shot three days ago. <laughs> right. We also get uh, the, the, the story of the heroic teacher who wanted to like blow the guy to get rid of, get yeah. rid of the kids out of the building. The heroic teacher got pneumonia from smoke inhalation and died slowly and painfully with a horrible, horrible respiratory problem well, for the rest of her life. And, and also, by the way, had her undoubted, unquestionable heroism and being the last person out of the room diminished a little to hell by pretending she had help from fucking angels. Mm. Yep. Right? There's also that. There's a lovely point as well where we find out that the daughter of the terrorist, Hannah Utah, and those enthusiastic <laughs> accidental terrorists, it says they didn't get charged. And it says they have tried to live out their lives in anonymity. And I just really wanted a line below that saying, but some arsehole keeps making films about them. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's exactly. Not anonymity. <laughs> and then the last thing they show us, this is insane to me. It says in text, <laughs> other times... A bunch of kids got killed at schools from terrorism. We don't know why. <laughs> it's like, I can tell you. It's because your God doesn't exist. I know the answer. Why put that in the movie? Well, so because, because they feel like they nailed it with that next bit where it says, and I quote, Yet even in Christ's day, not every leper was healed, nor every blind person made to see. And I'm like, I agree. Christ was a dick. <laughs> yeah, that's a thinker. <laughs> that's a thinker. What the fuck? So, like, basically, nonetheless, God is mostly nailing this. Yeah. Like, that could be the title of the movie. Think about how many kids he didn't blow up, though, of all the kids. Oh, yeah. And on that note, the fucking movie ends, and we have to profusely thank Marsh for making jokes about that with us this week and thus preemptively ending his chances of a uh, career in politics. Uh, Marsh, thank you so much, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for putting me through this. Let's let's do an upbeat one next time, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, I'll tell you what, basically they're all more <laughs> upbeat than this, so <laughs> at least we've got that. Uh, and of course, if you want to hear more from Marsh, check the show notes for links to his shows, Be Reasonable and Skeptics with a K. And while that does it for our review of the Cokeville Miracle, that doesn't do it for the episode just yet because we still need to pay next month's bills too, so Heath, tell us what's on deck. Mr. Cro Is this real? Yeah. Uh -huh. Mr. Kroger's Christmas. And we're doing a Christmas movie in June because... Eli's back next week and he wanted to. All right, then. OK, well, now it all makes sense. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 253 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Marsh for hanging out. And a quick reminder that you can hear more from him by checking the show notes for links to be reasonable and skeptics with a K. And a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash God awful and thereby earn early access to an ad free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows. The getting atheist citation needed 
at DND minus and the Skeptocrat available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email God Awful Movies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Rappers will take care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and we will dress on Mars. All the music was written and performed by our audio engineer and Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bostic, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard or another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Everyone who died in Columbine High School and Newtown and Stoneman Douglas and like 200 other places, they all deserved it, according to this movie. We just don't know exactly how, but they deserved it. Yep. Yep. What David thought was the key to immortality turned out to be the equation to make the calculator say boobs upside down. (laughs) Mars continued to be thankful to live in a country where crazy people generally don't have access to guns and bombs. <laughs> no, it really my. is. I love it. Really I was trying to find <laughs> think of another one you hadn't come up with, uh, and I, all, all afternoon trying to drop in at the end, and I could not find one. Damn it! It was it been killing me all day. <laughs> Also, I've defeated death. QED is the strap line for our first conference back after coronavirus. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, shit. That would be a great theme, actually. That would be a really <laughs> awesome theme. Everybody gets a sword or a scythe. No, you should get a scythe. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.